Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to solve this problem that was part of a math contest. The symbols square and triangle represent integers. It is given that square squared minus triangle squared equals 37. Determine square squared plus triangle squared. We are given five different answers here. One of them says not solvable, so we keep that in mind that that is actually a possibility. But other than that, we work with the symbol square and triangle, and the first step would be to replace them. <laughs> so instead of the square, we write an x, and instead of the triangle, we write a y, so that we can write this equation here as x squared minus y squared equals 37. This is the equation they give us, and we shall determine this expression here. So in terms of x and y, this would be x squared plus y squared. So they give us x squared minus y squared, and they want to know x squared plus y squared. Okay, what can we do with this equation here? We keep in mind, by the way, that x and y are integers. So numbers like 1, 2, 3, or negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Um, but in this equation here, on the left side, we have a difference of squares, right? We have x squared minus y squared. So we can write this difference here as a product. So instead of this difference here, we are going to have a product. In the first parentheses, we're going to have a plus, in the second, a minus, and then we go to our squares and we only take the variable, the x, and write it here in the first place, here and here. And then the same with the second square, we only take the y and write it down here in the second place and here in the second place. How does this help us now? On the left side, we now have a product, right? So we have a number times another number equals 37. So if you write it like this, we have a number multiplied by another number, and then we get 37 as a result. How many possibilities do we have for this first number here and the second number here? Can we find all the possibilities? Well, we're working with integers, right? x and y are integers. But does that mean that this number here is also going to be an integer? Yes, because that is this number and this means that we just add an integer and another integer and we know that this is also going to be an integer. So the first number is an integer. What about the second here? Well, same thing. We just subtract two integers, then we know the result is going to be an integer again. So we multiply two integers here and we want to get 37 as a result. There are not so many possibilities for that because 37 is a nice number. It is a prime number. And prime numbers don't have many divisors. The 37 is only divisible by one and by itself by the 37. So the only product I can find is 1 times 37, or of course we can also switch these two numbers, so 37 times 1 would be another option. And don't forget the negative numbers because we're working with integers. There is also the possibility of negative 1 if we multiply it by negative 37 and switch these two numbers. So we start with a negative 37 and multiply it by negative 1. These are the only options that we have to multiply two integers and get 37 as a result. And these are the only options we have to take a look at. So our first option looks like this, the second like this, the third like this, and the last one. So let's start with the first option. This means that my first number equals 1, so x plus y has to equal 1 and my second number is going to be 37. So x minus y is going to be 37. This is my first 
system of equations that I have to solve. But it's not the only system of equations because we have more options here. So my second one would look like that my first number, my x plus y, is going to be 37. And my second number, my x minus y, is going to equal 1. I'm not going to write down the other two system of equations, but we have to solve all of these. So let's start with the first one. How can we solve this? Well, we have x in here and x in here. To get rid of x, we could just subtract both equations. So that's a possibility. Or we also have y in here and negative y in here. So to get rid of the y, if you prefer that, you could just add both equations. Both ways possible. We just add these numbers here so that we don't have to deal with so many negative uh, numbers. So x plus x equals 2x and y plus minus y cancels out. And on the other side we have 1 plus 37 which equals 38. To solve for x we just have to get rid of the 2. So we divide both sides of the equation by 2 so that this cancels out and we found a value for x. Uh, 38 over 2 equals 19. Okay, x equals 19. We found something. What about my y? Well, I can insert my x here in the first equation and solve for y. So I have 19 instead of my x, then I add y and I get a result of 1. To solve for y, we have to get rid of the 19, so we subtract 19 on both sides of the equation so that this cancels out here and only y is left. And here 1 minus 19 equals negative 18. So we found values for x and y from our first system of equations. We have some more system of equations to solve, but we keep this in mind and just keep going to solve the second one. But we can do that in the same way. We just add these two equations so that we have x plus x, which equals 2x, y minus y cancels out, and 37 plus 1 equals 38. So to solve for x, we divide by 2 again. Things repeat here. We cancel this so that x is left and x is 19 again. Okay, what about y? Let's find out by inserting x here. So we have 19 plus y equals 37 this time. So to solve for y, I subtract 19 on both sides of the equation so that this cancels out. My y is left and 37 minus 19 equals 18 this time. Okay, I found two values for x and y. We keep that in mind and keep going. Same thing here. We just add these two equations. x plus x equals 2x. It's the same thing. y cancels out. Negative 1 plus minus 37. So negative 1 minus 37 equals negative 38. To solve for x, we divide by 2 here and here so that my x equals negative 19 this time. Always different values here. To find my y, same thing, we insert negative 19 this time for my x, but I add the y and I should get negative 1 as a result. To solve for y, I add 19 on both sides of the equation. This cancels out, my y is left, and here I have negative 1 plus 19, which gives me 18. Okay, we keep that in mind and keep going with our last system of equations. We add the equations again. 2x, we know now how it works. This cancels out, and here negative 37 minus 1 here equals negative 38. So again, if I solve 4x by dividing by 
to I get negative 19 this time and we insert it again for the x so we have the negative 19 plus the y equals negative 37. To solve for y we add 19 on both sides of the equation we know what to do so that this cancels out and my y equals negative 37 plus 19 equals negative 18. So we collect everything that we found. These are all the values for my x and y's. They are different from the signs, right? We have 19 somewhere and negative 19, 18 and negative 18. They're not identical. But what were we looking for actually? We shall determine x squared plus y squared. So if we uh, find x squared, which would be 19 squared in the first case, and we add y squared, so the negative 18 and square it, which result do we get? 19 squared equals 361 and negative 18 squared, the negative is going to be positive, and 18 squared equals 324. So if we add these two, we get a result of 685 for the first case. But is that always the case? Yes, because we square the numbers and just add them, then the signs don't matter. If you square 19 or negative 19, it's always going to be 361. And the same with the 18 or the negative 18. So we always, in every case, we will get the result of 685. And so we solved this problem. I'm curious how you solve this problem. Please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!